I am super excited to introduce my guests. They act, they write, they produce, they direct. They have their own production company, True Form Films, and they produce numerous award-winning films. Power couple Jennifer Barons and Mauricio Mendoza have 50 years of combined experience in Hollywood. I want to welcome them to the Hollywood Dream Maker podcast. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank, Hi, you, thank you for having us, Billy. Oh, so it's nice to see my honor. It's great to see you guys. For me, it's a, it's exciting, brother, because we go back, what, about 20, 20 years or so? 20, well, you know, we met, I believe it was in uh, Montreal. Soldier. There we go. Soldier oh. of Fortune. So I think that was like 97 or something like that. There we go. There we go. So, yeah, we got we got a few years, you know. <laughs> we there there you go, man. I remember <laughs> meeting you and thinking how freaking talented you were. And then I looked you up. I'm like, oh, <laughs> Oh, I see who this guy is. I oh, get it. You, That's awesome. And here you know, we are. It's, 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 it's strange how the universe works and puts people together because, you know, we, we, we met 20 whatever years ago in Montreal, but, you know, we never stayed in touch. I mean, I think we ran into each other in Cancun one time. There we go. <laughs> At another exactly. time. But, you know, we had seen each other, but, you know, we never stayed in contact. And then, um, I don't know, a year ago, it was a uh, Tony Robbins event. Yep. And, uh, yeah. And me and my wife were doing the virtual event and, you know, they had these breakout rooms and, you know, all of a sudden you're in a Zoom room and a breakout room and we get broken out into a room with you guys. <laughs> so, and, you know, it's it's crazy that the, the universe connected us again and put us in that room together for a reason. I know it's why we're here right now. It's to absolutely to, to absolutely. share our wisdom and our knowledge. Yeah, Listen, I, I love that. I got goosebumps when you said that, because, you know, as you well know, I do feel that, you know, the our energies right aligned because Absolutely. we were looking for the same thing. We're looking to, you know, upgrade the way our brain works. And uh, and Tony Robbins, what better place to do that than to, you know, uh, upgrade our, our brains. In, <laughs> exactly. In Raising our vibration together, getting into a beautiful state and, you know, just really attracting each other, uh, like-minded individuals. And for me, um, I, I'll never forget that breakout room because for me, it was, it was a breakthrough when I shared about my lifelong dream in this industry as a filmmaker. And you said to me, you make that movie and I will bring you on my podcast. And do you remember saying that to me? Yeah, and I, I, I was crying as I was sharing it. And, um, and I have this on, you know, and we just launched our, our teaser for the film and, you know, and then we ran into each other for clubhouse, um, a clubhouse reunion. So it's just really kismet. So thank you for bringing us on. And I really feel that this is, um, it, this is the the my gosh the continuation because it's been a year since we've stayed in contact online of a of a lifelong um friendship so yeah thank and you. i think there's no accidents right i mean you know it's not a frou-frou thing <laughs> it really is there is no coincidence that we're back in each other's lives a little older and a little wiser yeah a lot wiser a lot wiser i call them god incidences there yes. we go. I love that. Yes, I love they that. are. They you know, definitely I, are. I truly believe that, you know, you two have been in this business for, you know, a combined 50 years and, and you guys have an incredible journey into Hollywood. So I created this podcast to inspire young artists to follow their dreams. Now, if that. a kid like me can come out to Hollywood with 200 bucks in his pocket and a one-way ticket from a, a broken home, you know, I mean, look, if there was a checklist of anything that could possibly go bad to a child, I check all the boxes. There's no reason that I should could have been able to come out to Hollywood. I mean, I was running the streets of Brooklyn, getting in trouble, doing, you know, and then I, you know, I saw my, my friend get shot in the head in front of me and I was like, I got to change my life. I got to get out of here. And I said, I'm going to Hollywood. And I came out to Hollywood and, you know, the rest is history. I mean, I've been blessed. I've been working active for 36 years. Yeah. So, you know, that is my journey. But I would love for you to share, like, you know, when did you know, Jennifer, when you wanted to be an actor? How did, you know, when, 
at what age, what, when you got bit by the bug and, and how you made the dream a reality. So I love if, that. Thank you. No, thank you for that question. I also have, you know, the um, IG live that I do on Shortcut to Hollywood because we also would, that's why we're so, we're like kindred spirits because we're on that same path of inspiring young artists, aspiring actors to become working actors. And so giving think, back, right? And, and, and giving and back. Paying forward. So for me, I was five years old. Like I would sit there in front of the television and watch, I'm going to date myself, but y'all know I, I stepped out of the ageism closet <laughs> three weeks ago, so I'm good. Um, the Brady Bunch. The Brady Bunch was my favorite show and Wonder Woman. And uh, I just wanted to be in those little boxes. I remember the intro that when, um, when they would start popping in, you know, the, the first, the, um, what's that song? It's in my head, when but I can't remember. the lady but... met this fellow. Exactly. <laughs> hey, man, da, 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 da. Right. And so the box would come up when she would come. And it was a beautiful, like, experience for me because I also came from a broken family. And, you know, that was my escape. And back then the TVs were, as you know, the big tubes and they had... <laughs> They had those little vents. I would literally go in there, like right to the side of the television and go like this to see if I can see those little people in there because I wanted to jump in there. <laughs> that was what I wanted to do. And um, and I didn't get to really pursue my acting career until I was a senior in high school because my parents, obviously, um, they didn't know, one, how to get me started. And two, um, they were you know, just doing some, some shady stuff that they weren't supposed to be doing. So um, I just never had that opportunity until I was 17 that I took it upon myself. There was an acting class that, um, and it was the very first time my private school in Miami um, offered a, an acting class. I was a senior by that time. I was like, yes, I'm in. And we started a drama club. I was the vice president of the drama club. I was in every single little show, every, you know, I was a cheerleader. I, I did the pageantry life. And so I just little by little, I knew I wanted to be in the arts as, um, as a young, as a young woman, I'm like, I, my parents and my family, they, they'll never get me into this. I need to figure this out on my own. And so if I could do it, anyone listening to this podcast, you can too, especially right now, because there's so many resources. We have this little magic um, wand, literally. It's such a magical phone. It's not just a smartphone. It's a magical phone. You can find so many resources. There's so many free classes, free education. Um, and then when you're super serious, then you can invest so that you can have skin in the game and you really take yourself seriously. Um, but really going back to when I started, it was my senior year in high school. And, um, but then the universe kind of threw a, a, <laughs> a rent in my plans to start um, going um, to a, to a conservatory right after high school because my parents um, they they got in trouble they got incarcerated and I stayed alone um, at 18 years old with my brother and sister and my brother was um, 12 my sister was 10 months old and I chose to raise them and wow. another and another year went by before I my mom actually on the phone. Um, she was in, in there and she's like, don't use me as an excuse not to follow your dreams. I've done everything in my life and we put ourselves in risk and we made the shittiest choices to give you a better life, to be able to pay for private school and to be able to put you in a better environment. So you better start school next semester. And you want to be an actress, you got to start school. Don't use me as, as, a, as an excuse not to follow your dreams. And I did. I applied for, um, you know, the um, scholarship at the community college in Miami-Dade Community College South Campus. And I got in. I got the scholarship. And by then, you know, after a year of the, like, just trying to figure out how I'm going to do this with my, my siblings, 
you know, my, my boyfriend at the time, my friends, my neighbors would take care of them while I went to school. And um, at, in 1993, that was 89. And by 1993, I was already um, represented by 10 agents in Miami. And my very first gig, big gig was in The, the Specialist with Sylvester Stallone. Oh, yeah. Um, and that movie was done in Miami. Um, but the funny thing about that movie is that I didn't get into the auditions when they did the whole shoot. I got in for a, for a pickup shot. They went back. They went back in August to do one, that, that bus scene. And it was a pickup shot because the, the film was scheduled to premiere in October of that same year. And so I ended up booking it. Um, school girl on the bus. I'm number 17 on the credits. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and it was such a special um, moment because when it premiered, are you ready? It was on my birthday. Mm, wow. October 7th that year, I went to the movies and that was my very first A-list movie. And um, and I just knew, like, that was an omen that I'm like, I'm supposed to be doing this. And, um, you know, and here, here I am 28 years later, of course, ups and downs, life setbacks, but I'm here. And if you are determined and if this is truly what you want in your life, don't let anything or anyone ever stop you. And you can have dips and you can take breaks, but know that it's only to make you stronger to, to step into your power and really do what you love because life is, life is challenging enough not to do what you love. <laughs> you know, you might as well be doing what you love because the challenges are, and setbacks and the pain is always going to be there, but that's, that's our gold. Our mess is our message. I so. love that. Amen to that. You know, I mean, yeah. truly, I, I, I tell my actors all the time, everything that's ever happened to you in your whole life, the good, the bad, the ugly, all that shit. That's your gold as an actor. Yep. You know, that's what you're going to mine. That's what you're going to be vulnerable enough to share, you know, you know, substitute, personalize. So you're, you're taking yep. your soul and you're not acting. You're just being truthful. Yep. You know, I, mean, I don't, I don't teach acting here at the Manhattan Actor Studio. I teach truth. I don't want to see anybody act. Just be real. You know, I love take, that. Bear your soul. Leave a piece of your soul behind in that audition. And I promise you that the casting directors will remember you mm -hmm. because you didn't play it safe. You know, you, you put yourself out there, you were vulnerable, you were, you know, made some big choices and you were truthful. Absolutely. And I truly believe that's what makes a working actor, you know, being able to take, you know, all that good stuff that you've had, you know, in your whole life, you know, you raising your, your siblings and all that, that's all gold, <laughs> you know? Absolutely. It's yeah. my biggest blessing. Yeah. Billy, I always say it, it's, they're my biggest blessing. They taught me how to be a mom. They taught me um, to be stronger, to be determined, to fight. Um, and, uh, and yeah, <laughs> they taught her to fight. They taught me to fight. Uh -oh. <laughs> Did I trigger you, baby? <laughs> well, like a little PTSD there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, absolutely. Awesome. And you know, my sister now, she just had her first baby three months ago, my nephew and my, and my brother. Thank you. Um, they're, they're on their second baby. Um, my first niece is coming soon in February. So I'm really proud of them. My sister's a nurse. My brother's a businessman and they're both, they're um, both married and, you know, they're, I just see them and I'm like, yeah, but here, it makes me feel proud. You, you know what I want you to do is I want you to lean forward a little bit, lean forward. I want you to take your hand like this and I want you to <laughs> pat yourself on the shoulder there. Okay. <laughs> Yes. Really. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. I freaking rock. You know, I'll, <laughs> Joseph. I'll, I'll say this uh, based on, <laughs> on what Jennifer was telling you that, you know, I was looking at her and she's still 12 years later fascinates me. And mm -hmm. what we always tell people, our students um, and anyone who's willing to listen or wants to listen or is asking for advice is surround yourself with power people. Who are your seven power people? And my wife is part of my power, right? She elevates me. She challenges me. She makes me second guess. She makes me, right? 
there's always that's the beauty about both of us together is is exactly that is that we elevate each other to be the best we can man and we always say to to each other oh my god i feel everything for you <laughs> right because we tell everybody people go, god oh my god you guys are so great together and i go no but wait wait we we are fantastic together but doesn't mean we're perfect right because <laughs> nobody is and but yet we're willing to learn from each other in in the best um in the best way, yeah. you know, and that's why I started laughing about the, the, fighting. the fighting because you know we're Latino and you're you you know you got some Italian, Italian right? Puerto and there's, I'm, there's, I'm I'm half Puerto Rican, half Italian, so I got yeah. Latino on me too. So you, you, know. you got that 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 salsa and that, that wife is Latina, so. You know? so you got that picante. My wife, my wife is Mexican, so we yeah. I got some. So I live I live you know she makes me chilaquiles, you know. In the there morning, you go. So. So you understand, you yeah, understand the, the picante that comes oh, with being Latino. Listen, I, you know, I'm, I'm the truly the luckiest man on the planet. I mean, I have an amazing wife. I mean, she truly, she, I feel the same way that you feel about yours. I mean, she lifts me up. She's, she's my partner. She's my best friend. She's my soulmate. You know, we've, we've been through, yeah. you know, the roller coaster ride of, of stuff, life. And, you know, we come out the other side stronger. That's it. Yeah. That's it. And that's where the, the reality of it, it is. I, I always tell Jennifer, you are the truest love I've ever had in my life. That's beautiful. because, I, you know, because I, I, I feel it in my gut. I'm parked here, man. I'm going nowhere because I understand that we're always, both of us are continuously working on ourselves. Right. And that's, that's something that as, as, as a person, you need to do that for yourself. And you also need to do it together in the journey that you're in, because we're all trying to still figure things out. Right. And as an artist, you know? especially, which is one of the reasons why I said, babe, let's start, um, you know, people always calling us to ask us for advice or coach them or put them on self tape. And I said, you know, I had to wait so long to really start pursuing my dream. I want to give back. I want to reach those kids that have parents that have no clue where to start. Yeah. I want to reach those um, young adults and even older adults that have always had this dream of being an actor to actually do it, right? And not be in the pain of regret. Um, and so we started doing workshops in 2019, in-person workshops. In, we went to Austin, um, Mexico, San Diego, San Diego and uh, it was just a summer thing, Love that, right? Man. And then COVID happened and we pivoted online and we started our online platform. And so now we teach online and we've been able to reach students in Venezuela, in Mexico, all over the States, New York, New Jersey, Tampa, Dallas. I mean, India at one point. yeah, India I mean, it's point. just Amazing. like, yeah. it yeah. is, it's miraculous. And so now, and then to guide the parents, to guide the parents, just this last week, I set our little one of our, our, our youngest um, client, Oscar um, seven, we got him with an agent and, um, and then his mom has no idea how to start the actor's access or any of that. And so I'm guiding her through this and I'm like, you know, putting all of his information in with her and just really guiding the parents because that's the little girl in me, that inner child healing that I've been on is I'm, I'm so happy. She's so happy that I'm doing it for this little kid, you know? Yeah, it's beautiful. I mean, I feel yeah. the same way, uh, you know, yeah. for me, listen, I've been blessed and I've, I've had the career and I've had the TV series and I've been in the movies and all that stuff. And I've had all that stuff that you think is going to make you happy. You know, I mean, I was in New York, you know, producing a film. I was a producer. I was a star, you know, I had the, the stuff, the loft in Soho. I had all that stuff, but I was not happy. I was, I was, it was kind of, it was empty for me. I was like, is this it? And I truly found, that, you know, it's not about me anymore. It's about how can I be of service? How can I make a mm -hmm. difference in somebody else's life? Yeah. You know, when I, when I, my actors, you know, when they bang on the door and, you know, they, they have no clue on how to get started. And, you know, I've been there, done that. I got the t-shirt to prove it. You know, mm -hmm. I know where the potholes are. I know how to get you where you got to go. So what I do is, you know, I, I, I'm the guide and I love it. You know, every day I get a text, an email, something, 
Hey, I booked that job. I got my SAG card. I, this and that for me, that is truly more rewarding than when my agent called me up and said, Hey, you got that guest starring role. It was like, okay. Yeah, you know, Okay, really it's great. amazing you know, it, it, so truly for it's it's really all and i and i found this and you know like through tony's teachings too is you know it's is the secret to living is giving and it's a being of service and the like contribution said, pro yeah proximity is power and and if people can have be around me or be around you we've been there we know yeah. how to get you where you got to go you know, yep. I love that you're working with parents, you know, I mean, that's what I do, too. I guide them through the whole process, you know, how to make sure you have the right materials, make sure you're on Actors Access, LA Casting, you know, whatever, yeah, you know, absolutely. all the casting websites, you know, because that's, you know, that's your calling card. You know, that's people, if I'm a casting director, I'm going to click on that little thumbnail and then I'm going to go, okay, well, where's your demo reel? You know, can you act? And, you know, you yep. So it's about having all the right materials together and really showing your castability because, you know, we're a product. What are you selling to Hollywood? That's it. We, we, oh, I'm sorry, Inter. I don't want to. Nope. Go ahead. One of the things that we talk about is understanding the difference of what an actor is and understanding what a brand is. And you are your business. You are your brand. Yep. You're an entity. You can't just go, again, I'm an actor. No, you're an actor who's about to open a storefront right yeah, and you are going to invest in this product that's why you need actors that's why you need all of it because that's part of your publicity that's the thing that's getting you out there so we make we we have them understand that what they're about to get into is a business and they are the business and this is show business you can be anybody i mean there's a lot of actors who are not who are out there and working working and, and, and who are magnificent, but don't understand that this is a business, mm -hmm. right? So that's what I wanted to add to what you were saying. Well, I love that. You know, I've seen, you know, dozens of actors that have hundreds of IMDb, IMDb credits that I've worked with them 30 years ago on a movie and they're not working anymore. And I'm like, what? why aren't you working right now? You know, mm -hmm. you have, you know, so much talent, right. you know, all these credits, but they don't, they didn't pivot when everything went online, you know, they didn't. Right. And, and now they don't, they don't, they're not comfortable self taping, you know, they like being in the room. You know, I mean, the business has changed drastically from when we Absolutely. came out. I mean, you know, when we came out, you know, I mean, I, like you said, that little magic device, that little cell phone, I tell my actors yeah. all the time, this is, you're, this, you're a movie producer. This Absolutely. is everything. You can write a screenplay on it. You can film it. You can edit it. You can, I mean, I can't wait to get the new iPhone, uh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, yeah. 13 really? because cinematic. Yeah. yeah you know, Absolutely. You, no. See that poster over there? Yeah. That's the, that's the film that we. Our latest. Oh, this, our latest one. The one that we did during the pandemic and everyone had to use their phones. That was a homework. Everybody. That was the challenge. That's it. That's it. Love, I, I love that you guys took, you know, during the pandemic and when, hot, you know, everything was shut down, that you guys created a film. And, you know, it was kind of, can you tell me a little bit about it? I know it was like. It, it's, called COVID, it's, it's called mm -hmm. COVID-19 Sins and Virtues. Um, a friend of ours, his name is Alejandro Mendoza. Uh, he runs a company called Arte. And he does all the step and repeats for the business. That's what he does. That's his main thing. His dream has always been to have been a, a, a movie okay. producer, yes. right? So he had this idea uh, and he called, well, he first called Jen and then Jen come into the room. And I, I it was you know, like April 20th, like right a month, out, not even like three weeks into the lockdown right? We're one of the darkest of nights. We were like, what is happening? And then I go ahead. No. And then he, um, he pitched us because I have this idea guys, and I would love for you guys to, to produce this with me. Um, and I, he said the, I have, uh, I want to create a anthology called sins and virtues, all the stories related to COVID and what's happening in different homes from the, uh, 15, uh, 14 different filmmakers. Teams, and right? For, for, yeah, 15 teams. And they have to direct it, produce it, edit. They have to do all the whole thing. Write it. I mean, everything. In their own COVID pods. And 
the homework is only with their phones and anything that's accessible at home that they can film with. No money spent on this, right? And as soon as he said that, I'm like, we looked at each other and said, we're in, because we were looking. We what were we just talking do? about like, yeah. what are we going to do? Yeah. Every year we produce one feature film right. every year. Right. That's what we, one of our mission or our goals in, in True Form Films is to at least do one film a year, right? I got and, a question. Yes. Okay, so you guys are actors. I mean, you got a shitload of IMDb credits. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I, I couldn't even begin to to name them. I mean, uh, uh, Jennifer, you you have uh, Grace and Frankie, How to Get Away with Murder, Young Sheldon, Desperate Housewives, Nip Tuck, Jag, Boston Legal. I mean, you know, uh, Mo, you had your own TV series, Resurrection Boulevard. I mean, you guys you have credits, you know, a lot of credits but then how did you guys become producers how did that how did you make that transition in well in 2008 yeah. remember 2008 the strike mm -hmm. the crash where also the business just shut down um but for me it was really 2006 i went to um i went to sundance and i got so inspired at sundance it was my first time going to sundance and i'd been wanting to write my story and tell my story since I was 23. What can I tell you by the time I got here for, because for me, by the time I got here with my st a starring role in an indie film, I, I, I felt at that moment, I'm like, oh my God, I made it. I got to tell my story for, because for the last five years, what I'd been through, I'm like, that's people need to know, you know? So it's been 25 years and now I'm like, now I can tell my story even to a more um, in depth, you know, just to reach more people. But I digress. Um, I, 2006. I, so 2006. So I went to, to Sundance because of that desire to become a filmmaker. And um, at that, that year, Quinceañera won. Um, Quinceañera is this film that Jesse Garcia, a, a friend of mine, um, was starring in, and it was like this breakthrough role for him, and um, and there was a bunch of us going to Sundance, and so we were there supporting and also um, just following our, our dreams, and when it won the audience award and the, and the jury award, he was sitting next to me and we were all there and it was your like, friend, not me. Jesse. Yes. Right. Yeah. I didn't know him yet. <laughs> I didn't, I met, I met Ma Mauricio in 2010. So it was like just all of us jumping up and down screaming. It literally felt like we had won the Oscar, you know, like, and I was part of the winning team, although I wasn't in the movie or I, I just wasn't, but I was part of, the tribe and i'm like this is what i want to do this is what i want to feel i want to make movies like this and just hearing them i'm like that's it i came back home and i'm like i'm creating my my um my production company and it needs to be a special name and i started looking through all my spiritual books i've been to india and nepal and peru and i'm like it has to be special and then i found this um i opened a book and i did my energy i said god just tell me what it is and i opened it to to this prayer and it said your true form will always guide you um to you know just it i can't i gotta find it because i always forget the specific um words but it's like it true some. form films like that's my truth i just want to be authentic and tell the truth as an actor and and the stories i want to tell are to make a difference in the world and to tell the truth and to really inspire the world. And so Maria, Maria Valdez was with me. We were in my room and I'm like, true form films. And she's like, yes, true form films. And it was like this moment, this magical moment. And then I incorporated. And then I'm like, I need a team. And then I found my, it took, it took three and a half years for me to find my soulmate, my partner. How did, my how did you guys partner. meet? In a film, we got cast together. 
um, opposite each other. I was a detective. And I was the DA. And awesome. it was in Mexico. The movie was called Confessions of, of a, a Gangster. gangster. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> nice. And we were having an affair. He was married. In the film. In the, in film. the film. In the film. In the film. <laughs> and so, um, but yeah, it was definitely, but what was great about this is because he was going out with someone, I was going out with someone, and we just like literally um, connected on a, on a professional let, let me level. make this clear. She was going out with somebody. I was dating somebody. Well, we were both dating. Right. I guess I was dating too. It wasn't like official, official. We were, I was dating too, but going out, dating, what's the difference? Tomato, tomato. <laughs> anyway, to make the long story short, um, it was kind of like, oh, this shoot, because it was an indie film, we shot the first two weeks for me, my character, and then I left to I came back to LA, and the rest of my the rest of my scenes were like two three weeks later, right? So by the time I came back, the first the first couple of weeks it was like cool. We just hung out as friends, and uh, we had so much in common. And oh my god, yeah, I, I I'm producing a documentary. He was producing a web series, and we were just. We just talked and we're he's both a Venezuelan, Colombian. Oh, baby, you're both Venezuelan. I love you. He's Colombian, I'm Venezuelan. Um, and so we just had so much in common. And then also he spoke Spanish and danced salsa. To me, Ooh, that was like- That's good. That's a closer right there. <laughs> totally, totally, totally close <laughs> to me when I came back. So when I came back, they picked us up at the border and they drove us in to Ensenada. Um, in the uh, shuttle van, and at that point, I had, I had um, broken things off with the guy I was dating because I got sick and he did not come see me at all. Didn't even bring me chicken soup. <laughs> I, I was telling him, I'm like, oh my god, because he's like, how are you doing? I was just getting over the cold, and uh, and I was telling him, I go, am I over? reacting what do you think he goes no i would have brought you chicken soup <laughs> <laughs> good answer good answer so, so so really go ahead so hollywood puts you guys together puts Absolutely. us together yes. now, and, now uh, not only does hollywood put you together but you have two beautiful kids we have one what? one we have what? two kids two one kids? from her prior marriage yes. and one we had together. Yes, okay. Juliana is from our marriage. She's nine. And um, Adrian is from my previous marriage. Um, he's uh, he's 20 and um, and he calls him bonus dad. So, so are, are they in the business? Are they actors? Yes, yes. I They've been, they always say, yeah, I've been acting since I was in my mom's belly. Because <laughs> it's <laughs> the truth. So that's also a... Uh, a way of me letting you know parents know to trust us because we have our children in the business. Juliana and I just did SWAT together. Awesome. You guys we worked together SWAT. on the same episode? Yes, oh, as yeah. a real mom and daughter. And you also did? You and also we also did. did All Rise at the beginning of the year. So this year, because of COVID, one of the many silver linings, um, they're, they're casting real families. I know, it's and amazing. not only in commercials, but yeah. theatrically. And so we've been really blessed that Juliana and I've been able to work on two shows already as real mom and daughter. And uh, yes. Yeah. And she's, I mean, it's been an incredible and she opportunity. She just booked her, her first um, national. national. You'll see her. You can see our daughter on a Citibank commercial right now. Yeah. It's beautiful. Awesome. It's beautiful. But I'll tell you, uh, Billy, um, a little bit about uh, when we were producing, we started producing together. I was doing, I was working for, with my buddy on a company called Angel Flight Media. And one day, you know, my producing came from after I wrapped three season on uh, Showtime on Resurrection Boulevard. Um, the show got canceled, right? And you know what it is when a show is canceled, you go, oh, you know, three What's years, next? you're not worried about money. You're not worried, you know, you're just like, everybody's offering you work because you're on a series, right? And then the show gets canceled and there was nothing happening for me, nothing. I went into a major, I was depressed. I started having anxiety. 
because I, I didn't know what was happening. And there, I had wrapped my whole being around this, this, this thing, right? Called Hollywood the and stuff. The, the stuff that you're talking, the stuff. And one day I was out having breakfast with a buddy of mine and we were like, we were just complaining, going back and forth. And he's complaining that his company's not getting enough work. I'm complaining that nobody's calling me for work. And it just, at that moment, I'm like, man, how can we change this conversation? And I said, and I said, why don't we just, you know, you got a media company, you got cameras, you got lights. I got people that want need to act. I, you know, let's call writers, let's call directors, let's call people that are not working and see if we can do this. So then we started pitching ideas to each other and came up with an idea called Encounters. Uh, and uh, you can see it on YouTube. And it's basically, we had rules, right? We could only have two actors in the scene with, you know, it had need to have a social conscious, you know, we dealt with say, suicide, anxiety, uh, you know, I mean, alcoholism. anything, alcoholism, every episode. And it was one person was coming back from heaven, from another place. And then the person that's alive is the person that has the issue. And there's closure. It's all every episode is it's about closure, right? And for or forgiveness or right. you know, or or forgiveness for the person that committed the crime, whatever. Right. right. If you had one last opportunity to have a conversation with someone that has passed in your life, what would that conversation be? Right. Ooh, and yeah, like and that. that's it. 10 minute episodes, mm -hmm. and it was great because this is what I would tell every student. I start, I was just an actor and I made a decision to just start producing. And I called myself a producer. Yep. And then I did, at that moment, I was like, oh, I'm a producer, but wait a minute, I'm putting the money on this. So I'm the executive producer. <laughs> oh, I'm I putting an executive producer. Oh, so then I started learning. Then somebody said to me, uh, we had a, a budget of $300 per, per episode. <laughs> and then he, uh, uh, and, um, Meg looks, so we need to line produce and UPM this thing together. I'm like, What's a line producer, <laughs> right? What's a UPM? So he taught me about that. And then he taught me about what a gaffer is and a grip. And so all of a sudden my career took off as a producer. All of a sudden I began to understand and not only understand what it is to be a producer, but also what it is to be, to, to actually be able to look at a production and go, holy moroli, actors, we just think we're the special sauce in every project. And without any of this happening, we don't have a job. So I started looking at the business differently. It was the gift of my life, Billy. It was the gift of my life because it changed the whole perception. It gave me a, a, a new way of, of, so when I'm not working, I was producing. When I wasn't working, I was producing. Met okay. Jennifer, met Jennifer. We, I said, come and do an episode for us. But the funny thing is, let me just interject yeah. really quickly. Miguel was a um, common friend, like Miguel Torres. I I knew him and he knew Mauricio. So it, we didn't know each other, but he knew both of us. And he always wanted always. to, always um, wanted pitched to me to Mal. Uh, and especially when you guys started doing this. And then we ended up getting cast in this film. And then when he started talking to me about this web series and he mentioned Miguel, I'm like, wait, Miguel Torres? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, I know Miguel. He's been telling me about your web series. So it was, again, a, one of those moments of like kismet of like, it's, it was just meant to be. And so then I did write an episode and, um, and I, so I, I watched yeah. how she wrote. I watched how she produced. How uh, uh, she di uh, direct? No, no. Uh, we, no, I didn't direct that. I brought in the director. Perfect. I built the cool part. The way that you guys were doing it, which I loved, which is what um, why I said yes, I'll do it. Is I got to bring in my director. I got to write it and got to bring in my actor. So I produced the whole my episode. Love and that. I brought my team to them and they were like, all right, let's go. And that I thought was so enticing and so, so fun. And my, then our, my producing uh, entity started becoming, I, I, I started understanding budgets, how, I did, how to do something with no money, right? 
I mean, you know what that means. Right. It means there is some money, but how do you make this money work in what we're about to do? <laughs> and I, it became like, I started really getting good at it. Meet 20 twin, we do this thing together, start falling in love, start realizing, wow, you've been wanting to produce, I've been producing. So it was like a no-brainer. No-brainer, bro. <laughs> we started working together. We kept the the true form. Yeah, because he's like, let's start a new one. I'm like, no. Oh, you gotta and, I, and, I, and I pitched him my, I, I'm like, babe, this one, you're supposed, I'm waiting. I've been waiting for you. I've been, I've been really visualizing my team and you are my team. I love that. I created it. And you she know, said, films. yeah. And that's how, I mean, I, 28, eight, 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 uh, 20,000. Yeah. yeah. On uh, 2010, 2010 is when we met. Met. Yes. And ever since uh, we've been producing together, we've done over seven features together. We've done music videos. We've done events, mm -hmm. uh, you love know, that. and uh, right now we're on, on, on another feature together that's being produced in Mexico. And uh, so- So it could be done, whoever's listening, you guys, really, it's just that fire in your belly. And really, you know, talking about mindset and talking about um, your, your inner power, because truly through our mentor, Tony Robbins, everything we need is inside of us now. It truly, truly is. You just need to become aware of it. You need to become so aware of your, inner power that you will literally fall back and go, holy cow, I just thought that. And it happened. Like it is that powerful. Vision boards are powerful. Like I just highly recommend that it's going within. Don't try and find what you want out here. It's truly going within and doing your inner work Amen. and visualizing yourself, experiencing it and being in the gratitude of it as if it's already yours and let's talk about fear right let's talk about this when i first started producing i i, I know the showrunner who i went up to and i said hey man i'm excited i'm i'm producing right and <laughs> we know i know him really well and he looks at me and goes oh, it's so funny to me that all these actors now want to produce <laughs> and i looked at him and i said uh yeah why why, why can't we <laughs> he goes because you guys don't understand and i went that is something that I will never be in somebody's life, right? That day I said, anything can be done if you decide you want to do it, right? Because I did it, right? This showrunner has never acted, right? He's just a showrunner. <laughs> now, check this out. He calls me for things, things that he's asking me. Well, how do we, you know, how do you, okay. How, how can you do this for this kind of bud budget, right? So it's interesting because I, I didn't have money. He comes from like Hollywood money. So he just, the concept, when we first told him our movie, I don't know if you can see after school, right over there. Yeah. It's that boo. When I, we told him we had $100,000 to do that movie, when, and <laughs> <laughs> Wait, good you, luck. you guys think you can do a feature for 100 that Good luck brother he sat <laughs> and watched the movie at the premiere and he just looks at me goes i was wrong bravo i was wrong bravo. and the thing is it was just the want the right pure it was passion. just the desire to not be stopped yep. the desire to stop complaining mm -hmm. that's it was that those and two start things creating and creating and also learning that if somebody has their own fears, not to take that shit on, don't take it on. You decide what you want. That's why people say, well, I don't know if I'm good enough. I go, nobody knows. Nobody knows who's going to make it. And I tell them the story of Jamie Foxx. I went to school with Jamie. He was one of my great friends through college. His name is actually Eric Bishop. Jamie and school on our on our junior years, I'm I'm fucking out. This school, this school ain't gonna do shit for me. I need to go do parts. They got me running the sound. They got me running. They you know because there was not enough parts for the Latinos and the African Americans in our school. And he he said, I'm out. I'm done with this shit. Comes to Hollywood and who was the star of our class? Jamie Fox, because his I was winner. done. Oscar winner said, I'm done with this shit. They're not going to give me what I need. And he went and look at him now. Yeah. He's the one of our class. There's about five people in our class 
there was a there was about 50 people in our class and uh there's five of us who are still working in the business and i'll tell you this uh, five of them uh, no no four of them are all uh, either african american or latino because things weren't necessarily easy for us yeah. and i like that yeah. because it taught me how to fight for my place yep yep and you know about Say that again? Yeah, I want to talk about that for a second, about sure. being a Latino in Hollywood. I mean, I know, you know, when I first came out to Hollywood, you know, it, Hollywood wants to put you in a box. You know, you can, you know, being, being half this, half that. Oh, no, you can only play Italian or you can only play it. You know, it's like, no, I'm an actor. I can play anything. Don't tell me, you know, I mean, if I, I remember I did a NYPD Blue episode, a guest start on the show. I played a son of a mafia boss who was a psychopathic killer who kills, you know, a dozen people. He was gay. I mean, he was, he was, he was, he was you know, but then there was another role on the show for uh, Romeo Rodriguez, a Puerto Rican ex-con out of Rikers Island. And I heard about it. And I was like, I, I got to get on that. And they wouldn't want to let me in the door. And I begged and I, I, I fought to get in the door and I went in the door and I was completely, I had a goatee. I had the, I was completely the opposite of the guy that, you know, the one that I already played, I walked in, I got the part. And then after that, all of a sudden they started, Oh, now, now all of a sudden I can play Latino, you know I mean? So Hollywood wants to put you in a box. What is your advice for one Latino actors coming into Hollywood Two. Uh, for parents of Latino children or any children that want to be in the business? Okay. Um, well, this is definitely one of the best times to be of a Latinx descent. Like it is our time. It truly, truly is. It has opened up so much. We've gotten, I mean, in the last 25 years, I feel the difference um, big time. And so it's just really don't join the I can't or I don't know how or the um, lack of the lack of mindset, like really be the one to break through, like be the one. Right. Um, one, it's just mindset. You really need to work your mindset. Um, Hollywood right now is very open, open ethnicity. You're going to have more opportunities now than you that would we have did back when we first when started. We started. I mean, I when I went to college as well, I didn't, I wasn't getting the lead roles. And because I didn't feel fulfilled in my college experience, I was like, I'm going, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. And I didn't finish college either because of the same reason. Jamie was like, I'm just going to go out in the marketplace. And that's exactly what I did. And I am literally the only one in my class still working. Um, so it is, it is, it's, it, it, there's something to be said about if you are the underdog and if you are struggling, thank God for it, because that fire and that, like drive. that drive that give that comes along with that is what's going to get you to where you want to be in your life. And you're going to be the one still standing come 25 years from now. So don't ask for easy. Just ask to be stronger because that's just what the, the, the life is made, is made of, right? Um, for the parents of the kids, we're here. Billy is here. Shortcut to Hollywood is here to guide you. Learn from those that are doing what you wanna be doing. Bring your children to those that have children in the business, that know how to navigate the business and and we'll cut the guessing game out. But also listen, listen to your children. If this is something they yeah. want to do, give them the opportunity mm -hmm. to want to do it because they'll figure out if they if they'll stay in the game or if they don't. We did it with our kid. Our kid, it was four when we got in and what, right at 18, he started telling us, I don't think I want to be an actor. I want to go into engineering, right? And he's an engineer now. And But through this industry, he's learned so much, so much that now at least he's got a Coogan account. He's got his money situated, you know, all the things. So really listen, listen to your children. And then also saying that, you know, Jen and I are not the stereotypical Latino. We are the white So we felt when we came in, 
we both fell into even a harder bracket than, okay, there's not well, enough- Ambiguous. Ambiguous. There's not enough Latino work at the time we started, right? But also we didn't look Latino enough, right? So, but you know what? I always say, man, don't buy into the story that it cannot be done. We're still here, good ups and downs and whatever. Just if this is what you want to do, keep doing it. Just keep, because the only people who win, what is your, t- your thing? Oh, <laughs> you're so cute, baby. Lisa Nichols, I was listening to her. She's awesome. And that story that she tells, it's like, winners never quit. Quitters never win. So if this is what you want to do, don't quit. Take a break if you need to. I took a break, right? I had my children, but inside of that, having my kids, I still stayed in the casting world. I learned how to assist casting, how to be a dialect coach, be in the business of the business. Because the more you learn, and especially behind the camera as an actor, you're going to appreciate what it takes to be on a set and you're going to respect it more. And you're not going to be that uh, a typical actor, like, where is my trailer? And <laughs> oh my God, where's crafty? Like, no, you don't want to be that. You want to come in and be, and, and be, um, be of service like we were talking about. And that's how we tell our, our students to our, our students to see auditions there. It's an opportunity. You're there, you're a fixer, you're, you're problem solver. You have arrived to, the audition, and that's not even an audition, it's an opportunity to meet people, to let them know, hey, I am here to solve your problem, right? You're not looking up at them like up in a pedestal. You're not looking down at them like you guys suck. No, it's even, we're here. I'm a team player. If you want me, if I fit the puzzle, because it's such a puzzle, then let's go. And how do you learn that? By putting yourself in a production as a PA by at, by trying to get into a casting office as a reader or as an assistant or even with an agency, find ways to get inside of the business of the business so you can understand it from every every point of view and not be so isolated in the actor world where it's like oh I haven't gotten an audition in five weeks like no you don't want to. No, you're in, you're in the game because there's so many facets of the business that is fascinating, which is what I love. And I fell in love with this because it's so fascinating. It takes a million pieces to put one, one production together, you know? So, I, uh, you know, I'm a kid from, I was born in Davis, California. My parents are both Colombian, flew back. There's, there's five of us, my brothers. We flew back to Colombia when I was two. Came back to the States in 1982, didn't know how to speak English, had to learn how to speak English, how to learn how to fight for my place in this country to live the American dream, right? And I always tell people, I never chose this. It chose me. Why do I say that? Because my mom, my dad always had a singing dancing and they they just wanted to nurture this thing in us that they all saw potential i'm a singer i'm a dancer i'm an actor i'm a producer but i always I, for me it was like because my energy was always in what i was doing in my in in this world it always called to me every every opportunity i got into a, a bachelor of fine arts program not because i said i'm going to go do this i was doing a show called west side story the scouting of the of the program saw us told our parents hey i want your kids to come audition for a school got into the school was after i graduated a few months later i was doing another show the old globe theater in san diego has a master's program they saw me in the show hey love for you to come and audition for our show i mean for our school audition for the school got in got my master's all of a sudden I, I would then all of a sudden I, the, the, both the program, the program showcases here in LA and showcased me in New York. There was a lot of interest. I went to New York and I lived there for a month. I said, this is not for me. I want to be closer to my family, moved to LA 1994. And from there on, I hit the ground running good, bad, you know, but you know, I started working for Telemundo in Spanish 
Then I, you know, I got my first series on Telemundo. Which I want to say something. You know, like then I got then Telemundo after 13 episodes got canceled. Then I, then I'm doing another show with Tony Plana, well-known mm -hmm. actor, Latino actor, and he gets Resurrection Boulevard. The executive of that show sees me in the show, auditions me for the show. Eight callbacks later, I'm in the show. So it was all about my energy. I, Billy, I never said, this is what I'm doing. It's just my energy was always forward. And that's, that's how it just, it, how it just went. Right. Mm -hmm. So I would say, I didn't choose this. It chose me. Sure. Right. I mean, so, it was a gift that was given to you. you that's know, it. It's, it's Absolutely. You, you know, that's I, it. And I, I look it. at it as a God given gift, you know, that's it. It's, yes. And if it's in you, then it's in you. This is your path, and you have to follow yeah. that path. You don't want to go to your deathbed, go, I would have, should have, could have, but I didn't. Why not? Why? Right. You know, you you can achieve anything you want in this life if you go after it like you fucking mean it. That is right. Exactly. And, go, and, and don't be that that relentless, right. relentless in the pursuit of it. Exactly. Absolutely. And because I, everything had happened so easily in the, in, in the trajectory of my career that when the show got canceled, and nobody was calling, all my self-worth I attached to this thing that was not real. I felt all of a sudden that they didn't want me. I wasn't enough. I wasn't talented. All of a sudden, the self-destructive crap that I, you know, I was just expecting things to just be. And all of a sudden, I found myself in a depression. And I'm like, why am I depressed? Oh, because shit has been easy so far. Now you're going to have to do some work. Now you're going to have to face your life. Now you're going to have to really do the work. And I look at the business so differently nowadays, mm -hmm. so differently. Right. And it's been a path of, of, mm -hmm. of healing, non-expectations, and always of dedication and work. That's Absolutely. It. And, and as a Latino, and it is. And as a Latino, I wanted to add, um, if you know Spanish, really work on your Spanish because you're going to get the opportunity times two to sure. work in two different markets and that to me has always been a blessing I've been able to work in both markets and you know and I've had to coach I've got I've not had to I've gotten the opportunity to coach other Latinos on set as well as you that don't have the you know the the language and, and that breaks my heart because it's like, no, learn your language yeah, learn and be, proud I, of it. be proud of it Own who and you really are. do the work. That's huh? it. Own who yes. you are. That's it. Because that's what makes you unique. Absolutely. You, there's only one of them. Absolutely. Be proud you know, Billy, I'm going to tell you this. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. I'm going to tell you this quick little story is that when I got to Los Angeles, my agents changed my name. They called me Maurice Mendoza <laughs> because they thought my name was too ethnic. And you've heard this story And they before. changed mine to a J, yeah. right? Instead of a Y. <laughs> so, so for 10 years, I was Maurice and I never got used to it. And one day I just, it felt, I, had, I was having an identity crisis mm -hmm, sure. because I never, I, that was not my name. <laughs> yeah. And I, I took, went to my agents. I said, my name is Mauricio. We got to go back to my name. When some people call him Mo. I'm like, who? Yeah, Why who? are they calling you Mo? <laughs> yeah. A lot of people call me that because they can't see Mauricio. But I went back to my name. <laughs> yeah. my, I went back to my name after a while. As well as I, I went back to the Y. And again, it's, it all goes back to this, you guys. Be your authentic self. Unapologetically. Love yourself in the process. And for the parents... Don't worry. Don't worry if your if your child wants to be an actor and it's like, oh my God, Hollywood. Don't worry. Let them experience it. Be there with them every step of the way. It gives them life skills. It gives them communication skills. It gives them interview skills, which is now my confidence. son's confidence. My son is at Princeton right now. And he got in through interviews. And he, you know, didn't have that was the easy part for him he didn't have the nerves he didn't have because he had been auditioning his whole life That's right and being able to have a he's conversation a he's a great to have a conversation with anybody so see that see it as a sport right yeah. because hollywood is seen sometimes 
you know, especially from the other side of the country, it's like, oh, it's so bad because of the media or whatever. But no, there's some good people in Hollywood. And you, and there's three of us right here that are really good people that will guide you to where you need to be. And um, and it'll be a fun adventure. Because so, it is. I, it's I, an adventure. I, it's amen. a journey. Yeah. So you, I had a parent reach out to me not too long ago. And the kid, uh, teenage boy, uh, he took like four classes with me and, you know, he was like in football or whatever. And, you know, that was the end of it. Never heard of him kind of disappeared or whatever. Long story short, uh, I got a email from the father and, and then a beautiful email. And then I called him up and he says, I, I got to tell you something. And I was like, well, you know, what's up? He says, my son has never, ever, ever passed his oral presentations at school. And he aced his oral presentation. Oh, well. that's awesome. And, and, I got chills. And, and, and I asked him, what's, what happened? What? And he says, I just use what I learned at the Manhattan Actors Studio. <laughs> you know, and it's really about walking into a room. And it's about confidence and it's about owning your power and shining your light and going in there and, and just being you. And, and uh, that for me that is so rewarding and and I, oh. you know, I get that all the time it's really not for young act for young kids and whatever it's a great life tool that they're going to have in their actor toolbox when they're going for a job later on in life or they need you know i teach a lot of breathing and grounding and meditation you know having that tool and you i wish somebody would have taught me that when i came right. out to hollywood you know i know us too <laughs> so, so now being able to you know i like going to tony robbins or whatever i grow constantly so i can give give back to my students take all of my knowledge and and give to them and you know i i think you guys are doing the same thing and i, and I think that's a that's a beautiful beautiful thing so i i applaud you Thank you. Thank well, you. We, we, we applaud you as well. Absolutely. And I, I definitely want to interview you in our podcast on IG. <laughs> Absolutely. So real quick, if uh, you know, if you were to go back and give the younger you some advice, what life advice, acting advice, what, what would that be? Don't suffer so much. Don't beat yourself up so much. Don't try to be perfect. Just truly, just truly be, be your authentic self, knowing that you're enough. Um, I, I hid a lot because of the shame that I felt with my family. And that's what my story is about. It's stepping out of that shame and, um, and really owning that, that mess that shameful stuff is what what made you you and the strength that i have is thanks to that and everything that i overcame is thanks to all of that stuff that i went through and i'll tell you why i was able to overcome it because some people aren't able to and they really go into like the victim. The, well, I mean, they just go in, they stay in the blame and they don't forgive. But my parents and my family, ultimately, they always gave me love. They showed me who God was. They gave me good uh, family values. We loved each other when it was like, it's like an, um, like an Italian family, right? Like, you you're it's all about the love and then it's all about if it's a fight it's a fight if it's a celebration it's a celebration it's just big it's all full out right but at the end of the day there was always that let's make up let's kiss and make up because we're family right and that, i grew up with that and i and um so that's why I'm, <laughs> he calls me Hurricane Jennifer <laughs> because I, I, I'm a spreader. When I, get, when I get somewhere, I'm like, oh, I put my stuff, but then I'm also bigger than life. And that's my mom. And I was taught to just be my authentic self. But somehow in Hollywood, in auditions, I shrunk myself and I'm like, oh no, I can't. I can't really be that. I got to be something that they want me to be. So that's what I would tell myself is don't suffer, be who you are and love yourself. Amen. And you're not perfect. You're never going to be perfect. And that's okay. Beautifully said. You know, yes. 
I truly believe that you were created a masterpiece and there's nothing wrong with you. It's these little thoughts between our ears that the noise, I like to call it, you yep. know, and if you can get out of here and get into here and into your true self and get into your heart and come from there, you know, imagine if you walked into an audition, not going in fear, not in trying to get anything, just to be, uh, just shine your light. Yeah. I love acting. Guess what? I have an audience. Yep. I mean, yep. Play. Yeah. And every time I've done that, I book it. Every time the three of us have done that, we've booked it. What about you? If you were to give yourself some advice, if you can go back to the younger you and give yourself some advice, what would that be? I had this discussion with one of my students the other day. I would tell my younger self, learn about money. Learn about money. Have financial what is it called? Financial education. education. Oh, Make man. sure that you ed educate yourself in finances. Because the time that I was the most rich in my life, uh, monetarily, right? Because it's just money, right? We yeah. all say it's energy. I didn't invest enough. And I, I, I found myself in a, in a moment in my life where I didn't make the right decisions. And uh, I got myself stuck, right? And uh, I, I would tell my young self that you know it's one of the things that jennifer and i started taking uh classes about finances about three three four years ago we jumped in and started really educating ourselves because i wanted our children to not get my relationship to money was horrible so i said i don't want our kids to pick up anything that might might hinder them in in their future so uh, so she found these classes, these, and we went and started taking, and started really, really working on our 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 relationship to money, and start realizing, oh my God, there there is such a thing as your relationship to money, <laughs> and the things that triggers you, and that money doesn't grow on trees, and that rich people are evil. I'm like, oh my God. So I would tell my younger self that learn about money. Money is not a bad thing. It's not. And, and it's really great to, to understand that to learn how to live on 70 to 80% of your income, invest, there's three buckets, right? Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and then invest like 10% and then donate 10%. Or if you can't do 10 and 10, you, you, know, you find it 5% 5, 5 until you're able to and make that it's a it's a habit it's a ritual that's what that's what the wealthy do the the, wealthy the, 1%. the, the generational of you know the wealthy that that um that have um done this for generations that are born into it it's like okay well that's just what what we do right but coming from a working class coming from from a uh really a scarcity a, poor poor family on my mom's side and then my dad's side was more he was more middle class they didn't know how to how to you know manage money either and it's all about survival so i love we, that you that you mentioned that because yes absolutely that's something else that i well, would tell the, my young self one, one <laughs> learn things, how to invest one, one of the things that 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 um that we got that I, we got through through Tony Robbins was was well, was was all of this and part of the financial stuff that we started studying it talks about California being one of the states that doesn't teach um, uh, you know in in our education well, anything about finances they teach us math but they don't give us right there's only like you know, seven states in the United States that teach financial education education and yeah. also they don't teach anything that has to do with cognitive uh, behavioral a uh, behavior right which so that's why most kids grow up only repeating what they learn from their parents or from friends or their teachers so can you imagine in a world where we all went to the school got the same shot about learning about money and cognitive uh behavior we'd all be a lot better off if this was implemented into our school systems so that's why we teach this to our, our kids in class, our students. We always tell them, this ain't just about acting. We're teaching you the practical tools, which means business. Business is money. How are you going to be using your money when you get that 
big break. Game. Sure. You know, show and business. then we talk about this. Yeah. Show business. Yeah. You got to know. You got to yeah, know the business end of it. You know, if you just know this show, you're in trouble. You know, I know That's for it. me. I know for me personally. You know, I grew up. We grew up. I grew up poor. You know, my broken home. You know, my mother used to drag me to the mailbox and open it up and go, "Look, your father doesn't send child support." So what does a 10 year old little boy do? He creates a story. I'm not good enough. I don't deserve love. I don't deserve money. I'm not worthy. You know, my mother used to tell me we're survivors, you know, uh, you know, well, we're here. I cut to me, come to Hollywood, land my own TV series. I'm making a shitload of money for a kid that's never had anything. Well, what am I doing? I'm flying to Caesar's palace and I'm pissing, a, getting the Caesar suite. And I'm pissing away on a roulette table, you know, because I felt like I didn't deserve it. I wasn't worthy of it. I, I was carrying little Billy's story around with me as a truth, but it's, it was a lie. If, if, if I was yeah. a fly on a wall and I watched what happened is a woman and a child, they walked to a mailbox, they opened it, they closed it, and they went inside. That's all that happened. That's I it. created the story. That's and it. I, and, and it's a bullshit story because I do deserve love. I do deserve money. I do deserve everything. It's mine by divine right. And if you can change your story, you can change your life. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so, so I've truly just changed the channel. I don't listen to that channel anymore. And I know what I'm worth and, 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 you know, that I deserve all that stuff. So anybody yes, out there, it. know your worth, know who you are, that you are a masterpiece. There's nothing wrong with you. Go after your dreams with a vengeance. Don't let anybody tell you it can't be done because Amen. we're living proof that it can be done. If, if a little girl from Miami, you know, if, 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 if a kid from Brooklyn, you know, if, if a kid from California came out and says, you know what, I'm going to do this well and made it a reality, then you can do it too. So go That's after right. your dreams with a vengeance. And guys, I can't thank you enough for coming on the show. Truly. A pleasure, Billy. This has I'm been sure a, your wisdom. One, thank a you. wonderful experience. Thank you so much for having us. Absolutely, my Absolutely. brother. I send you a big virtual hug through and, here. Mom. And we will be having you in Shortcut to Hollywood. Big hugs. Mwah, 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 mwah. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more, you can click here to watch the full podcast. Please make sure you subscribe. Please leave a comment if you have any questions you'd like me to answer on a future podcast. Make sure you turn on the notification bell so you'll be notified next time I post a video. And I will see you next time. Take care. Have a great day. Bye-bye.